Hi, back with a follow-up video to this uh, Jackery power bank because I didn't have enough time to look at it yesterday. So I'm back because uh, people wanted me to look at it. Got a lot of interest, so I've taken it out of the uh, plastic enclosure um, because uh, what I thought was uh, probably like a low side battery protection um, device down here. Um, a lot, quite a lot of people were saying, nope, these are uh, dual uh, MOSFETs and there's got to be a control circuit somewhere, um, either under the inductor or underneath or something. So I did get it out and uh, yeah, it was, um, it was stuck in there, so, but I managed to uh, get it all out and ta-da! Looks like there is! <laughs> That's where the MOSFETs are. So there is a control, so this is the battery protection controller. So yeah, you had to get the entire board out to actually look at this sucker. Now, what is this? What is this? It's a 50, K, is that 50 or is that, that's a 5, not an S, that's a 50 KU. So we can look up that, little 6 pin jobby. So yeah, um, so they would certainly be. Uh, MOSFETs. So, yeah, my bad. Um, I just assumed that they were low side battery protection. But, nope. So, we'll have a search for that SMD code. Uh, 50KU. I don't know. We might get lucky. We might not. But, then again, you can look for battery uh, protection ICs, 6-pin uh, jobbies. So, you know, look, you don't know what's faulty, whether or not it's the uh, driver or whether or not it's the MOSFETs or whatever, or there's something else go into it, um, don't know. So I'm not getting anything for 50KU, like you can go like must include 50KU or something, but I'm just, no, it's just, it's just not there. So what we're going to have to do is search for uh, SOT uh, 236 and uh, battery protection. So if we do that, uh, we get, you know, diode in ink jobbies, um, they're probably like a similar, as I said before, there's probably like a whole bunch of uh, pinouts, um, the e equivalent pinout uh, devices. And because they're designed for the same lithium ion battery, you know, single cell application, the only thing that would change was like, would be like the voltage difference, you know, single cell or multiple cell or something like that. So you could argue that, uh, yeah, there's a LCSC, there you go. Let's check out that. Windsock, it's going to be one of these, it's not going to be like a TI jobby or something, right? It's going to be, considering that the uh, that the one, the main controller I see that they used is one that you've never heard of. Yeah, it's just going to be uh, one of these, um, you know, Asian sourced brands protection I see for one cell lithium ion, blah, 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 blah. And it's a DW01, I've seen that um, elsewhere, so that's the package uh, code on there, but you know, like, they're designed for driving external FETs like that. And that looks like, what's, um, well, these ones aren't uh, series like that. Um, these are definitely in parallel. Um, there's no doubt about that because you can see that these, see that right, right there. There you go. Parallel, not in series. So then we go to Mouser here, you know, lithium ion, lithium polymer, like, you know, Nishinbo <laughs> data sheet. Right, I, I guess you'd, you'd get to know all these if you're into, you know, designing your lithium ion battery products and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I think it might be a hard time finding out the exact device here, unless somebody happens to know. If you do, leave it in the comments down below. Yeah, but our odds of lucking upon it, um, probably not great. <laughs> Murphy's Law and all. There we go. Once again, they're series. So yeah, we've, we've got parallel jobbies. Definitely, or so we, or a single, and they've just put two in parallel to handle the extra current or something. Although this isn't, I don't consider this like hugely high power. I don't know why they couldn't have just used the one MOSFET, but anyway, I mean, obviously you can narrow it down based on uh, cell voltage and stuff like that, but we're probably not going to find it here, right? You're better off going to like LCSC maybe. Okay, we're in battery management ICs. So we want SOT 23, 6. SOT 236, there you go. So we want both of those. I just picked the first cab off the rank there, and once again, series. So, uh, then once again, we get this DW01 everywhere. That seems to be like a jelly bean part. By the way, there were some people that 
said, oh, this is cracked down here because they thought they saw a crack on there. No, that's just, uh, <laughs> so that's just some residue on the top there. So get a bit of spit and there you go, like a bought one. Now we can actually search for uh, this uh, moose fet part and uh, with a, like a six pin um, wide DFN thing. But unfortunately, um, it doesn't look, <laughs> it doesn't look easy. I've searched for a six pin DFN and like this is on Mouser and I get all those and I did it on um, LCSC and um, LCSC, look, their, their, their packages, they don't even have any six pin DFNs. Now at this stage, what I'm thinking is that uh, this device could actually be a dual MOSFET, a dual series MOSFET with dual gates like that. Hence the two extra pins on it. So I think, yeah, um, the configuration we've got might be the dual MOSFET, series MOSFET like this, and that's what we've got, and they've just put two in parallel to get the uh, current requirement. So I, I think that's a reasonable hypothesis there. Because um, otherwise, like, yeah, it's not, it's not really making sense. So I reckon, yep, they're a dual, and they've got two of those pins are going out to drive uh, two of those MOSFETs. So I think what I need to search for now is uh, dual MOSFET, not single. So I'll search for dual MOSFET DFN6. And right off the bat, what do we get? Dual N channel MOSFET. Uh, no, that's wimpy. Once again, like we need that wide body part. That seems to be the, I think, I think if we find it, we'll know it. Um, Cause it seems to be really quite oddball. A good thing to do is search Google images. You might get lucky. Yeah, nah. <laughs> There's probably, there's got to be one person out there. Oh yeah, I know that. MOSFET, used it before. <laughs> now what is the size of that MOSFET? Because uh, you can actually search for, you can search for the size of the package. Get my engineering ruler out here. Look at that. Oh, five millimeter. So it's five by, all right, let's call that five by two. So it's a five by two DFN. So if we search for a five by two DFN, we might get lucky. And... Doesn't look like we're getting lucky, like must include 5x2, like we can go down the list, but it's not, must include 5x2. <laughs> uh, oh, DFN 6 DFN, 5x2, there we go, don't mind that, but that, is that the only hit? Wow, a 5 by 24 millimeters. I think it was actually 2, but, oh, now we're talking diodes ink, is this a winner winner chicken dinner? on DigiKey, Mouser. So I guess I could have searched Mouser or DigiKey for a <laughs> parametric search. Anyway, T2, uh, let's look at the S1, S1, S2. Okay, that, <laughs> that pinout doesn't show, it would have been nicer if they showed them in series, but it sort of like wraps around like that. So I thought that they were in parallel, like at first, and that kind of didn't make sense. But uh, yeah, so imagine those flipped one, one on top of the other because the pins here are S1 and, S and S1 and S2 here with the two separate gates. So yeah, so that makes sense for our W, um, what is it? The W whatever, O1, the DW01, which seems to be like a generic thing. So I could check the pin out of this um, to see it's probably a generic DW01 because like, it seems like everyone makes that. It seems like a jelly bean part for this sort of thing. And I just noticed that <laughs> these two MOSFETs, they are in series, but they're actually back-to-back. Uh, -back. So yeah, um, that does make sense. So let's measure the uh, gates on those and uh, see what we get. Uh, my National Instruments virtual bench has died. Bloody thing, I hate PC-based bloody things. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to use my uh, meter here. And um, I can't find my good little ultra miniature probes. They're here, so I used them somewhere and I didn't put them back on my microscope bench. So anyway, eh. yeah, they're connected. Yep. And these two over here will be connected as well. Yep. Okay. And then they are separate. They are separate. Yeah, they're separate drive. Okay. Right. So 
yeah, those two di devices definitely in parallel. They use two separate uh, gate drives. So that indicates that, well, they're obviously, they're both in parallel, obviously, right, to get the extra current. But uh, they do have, like, the separate uh, gates, the separate gate drives. So it looks like they would be um, the series configuration. That makes sense, that we saw that series configuration that we uh, saw before. And once again, see, that wide body does not show up. The wide body does, that device that we found on Mouser before, does not show up in the parametric search. Let that be a lesson to you, okay, trap for young players. Um, yeah, it, it did not show up. Yet we found that, no problems before, right? Yet, if I go back, where is it? There it is there, right? And I was searching this, I was searching that section, moose fits. Anyway, let's go measure the gate voltage, shall we? Sorry, I can't show you my multimeter. Sorry, I can't show you on screen, so you're going to have to take my word for it. I need the microscope to see where I'm probing here. And so I've got USB, external USB connected in. Aha! Uh -huh. We now have three volts. We have three volts on that gate. 3.15 volts. That one's uh, 3.15 because they're parallel. Tongue at the right angle. Come on. That one is zero though, and we'll just verify the voltage across there. Yeah, 3.5 volts across the moose fit, so that's it's open, just like we measured uh, last time. Oh, I just realized that those two in series, they're the opposite direction. Anyway, there were some people that said I should charge up the uh, battery pack, even though it's at almost 3.6 volts, which is like the middle of the discharge curve. It should be fine. They think I should actually charge up the pack and see if that makes a difference. Well, yeah, before, that's a simple thing to do. So that's worth a shot. I'll do that now. I'll just charge it up a bit more, hook it up to the bench uh, power supply. I've done a video on that, how to charge uh, lithium ion cells with your bench power supply. I have to link it in. Get back to you. Oh, no, check it out. Something's happened to my Roden Schwartz NGP800 power supply. Check out the screen. Check it out. Like, there's something seriously wrong with that um, <laughs> screen. It's like there's some sort of artifact on it. I don't know what's going on there. Has it got like, it seems like stripey or something as well. So it's got a driver. Seems to have a driver issue. Anyway, there you go. I've got that uh, charging at one amp and uh, yeah, I'll get back to you. Okay, it's up to 3.93 volts. I'm charging at 2 amps, actually. If I turn that off, it actually drops down to 3.8, but that's a, you know, that's pretty decent. So I'd say I'm just going to run with that. I don't want to wait any longer, so I'll solder that back on and see if it uh, powers up. I doubt it, though. Unfortunately, nope, that is a fail. And somebody suggested plugging up its own uh, clacker and <laughs> infinite power. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, nah. So, um, no, charging, there wasn't a battery threshold voltage thing that was under locking it or whatever. No. And I think it's likely that this is that Jelly Bean W01, because the pin, pin out seems to match. I mean, ground here is uh, pin 6 over here, and if we jump over to the data sheet, you can see that pin 6 is ground. Uh, pin, pin 5 is VCC through a resistor. And, well, it, yeah, that seems to be it. And, yeah, I'm assuming that trace goes up there to pin 5, so it's through a resistor, and then you've got a bypass uh, cap on there going down to ground. So that matches up. Uh, pin 2 over here is the input current sense uh, charger detect. And you can see that's through a 1K resistor there, right? So that seems to match up. And pin 3 is the charge control gate, so that, yeah, I assume that V, I'm not even going to buzz it out, I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain. And pin 4 is a test pin, it looks like nothing connects uh, to that. And pin 1 is uh, MOSFET uh, gate detection, and I think that will go, you'll probably find that uh, that pin 1 goes up there to that VIA, which drops down to the MOSFETs. So that appears to be a generic um, DW01. Uh, battery protection, I see, of some, who cares what the manufacturer is, right? Um, you're actually, in fact, the, yeah, it, it doesn't have DW01 on it, but 
you know, I, I think it's an equivalent type part. Same pin out. Measure the voltage across the chip. Yep, we're getting into 3.8 volts there. So the, uh, the chip is getting voltage. Now I'm actually gonna check this switch. Oh yeah, that works. Okay, <laughs> just, wanted to, just wanted to make sure. Right, so what we can do now is we can just uh, bypass the uh, MOSFETs here. So just basically get a small little bodge wire to go over here. You can place it with a fuse. Or I'm just going to use a little a tiny bit of, you know, mod wire like this, um, which will act as a fuse. Uh, and that'll go over. And let's just see if the thing powers up. Um, yeah, because I, I don't want to desolder these now. It's easier just to bridge it. Uh, put our little bodge wire in there. And just tack that onto there like that. And we are now bodged up. Nothing's getting hot. No magic smoke's escaping. What happens if we push the button? Nothing. What happens if we plug in an external charger? Nothing. All right. Looks like, do we have a controller failure? Were we uh, chasing a red herring down a rabbit hole with the moose fits there and the charge control? Because we have well and truly bypassed that now. Let me double check our boost converter, 3.3 volts there. So, um, yeah, like our input is, is nothing. Like, there's stuff there, there's voltage there. Okay, we've got our external power now. And there's our input. Okay, so there's our 5 volt input. And there's our boost converter is 4.4 now. Something is, but it's not, it's not working. I think we might have a <laughs> faulty controller. That was probably the least likely scenario. Because, like, these, um battery protection things and MOSFETs, they kind of like fail all the time. They're a bit notorious, so damn. <laughs> I could get in there. I've, I've already spent enough time on this today. I want to do other stuff, unfortunately. So I'd really have to resolder that, um, extend that air to get it out, to physically get that out, I think, from there to be able to get in there and probe that chip. So that's, that's a pain in the butt. But um, yeah, we've basically ruled out the protection there. That's interesting, huh? <laughs> Who would have thought? And I've just plugged it into a monitor here, and no, like we're we're getting nothing out of this. So that's interesting, is it not? It looks who who bet on the controller? I don't think many people bet on the controller. Everyone was saying, oh yeah, MOSFET, or it was the uh, looks like a WD-01, if you do actually have a specific part for that, leave it in the comments down below that matches that. But we found the exact um, part number for the MOSFETs, uh, though, so like it even matches the uh, code on top of the chip. So yeah, we definitely found that. That's a diode ink jobby. But there you go, that is interesting, is it not? Anyway, sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> Got to get on to other things. So um, another quick edit and upload. <laughs> anyway, thoughts and comments down below. Hope you found it interesting. It's, uh, yeah, looks like something to do with the controllers not happening. So eh, bypass battery protection. The voltages are there. So eh. <laughs> interesting, huh? Catch you next time.